Hey Man Cave, this is Bob from the Bob Zenscale Man Cave and Man Railroad. I'm here to review the Microtrain's wind turbine set. It is a windmill set that just came out this month and it contains five flatbed cars, 89 footers, uh, two windmill blades like this one, and also uh, an extra flatbed that goes in between the two blades because they obviously overhang and a, uh, a tower section and the generators with two blade hubs attached to that. Uh, it took quite a while to put the end pieces together uh, but not it's not so bad. You just gotta make sure you just don't uh, glue them together wrong uh, especially if you're using super glue. So, at the end of this review, we're going to show you how this is put together. And uh, so, stay tuned for more of that uh, exciting video and instructions. So, let's get to it, shall we? Okay, we have here is the Microtrain's wind turbine set. As you can see, you have basically windmill blades on uh, flatbeds, 89 foot uh, flat cars. It comes with a, a tower section, two blade sections, uh, two hub uh, connectors, uh, blade, hub, blade hubs basically, and a generator unit. As you can see, this is in a very tight radius for this uh, video here, but uh, keep in mind if you have this set, you got to run it on some really wide radiuses, obviously, because uh, your clearance on this one's probably going to be about another two, almost two inches overhang right there. So having a wider radius will bring this in over here. I'm running it on 18 inch, 19 inch plus radiuses, so it's not too bad. Um, it does clear the track that's right next to it with a load of, with a bunch of cars, so that's a good thing. I can now run it around the man cave without banging into something else when I did my testing here earlier. Um, things to keep in mind is these blue end caps and assemblies that you have to make. Um, it took me about 45 minutes overall to make sure I got it all put together right. Um, once you do it a couple times it goes a lot faster because you know okay I gotta push here, glue there, blah blah blah. So um, <clears throat> at the end of this video I've got my condensed version of my assembly process and how to put it all together and so you can stay tuned and watch that. So let's go uh, take some uh, closer looks at these uh, cars. Okay, This is the flatbed. It comes with well, 89 foot flatbed with a couple of grab handles on each end see that here and there I did put some uh, pretty good detail down here on the bottom got some uh, lines for uh, brake lines airlines uh, microtrains couplers got that long uh, shank on them and a uh, nice stiff uh, spline down the middle keeps it nice and uh, flat doesn't bend at all of course it shouldn't <laughs> you can see uh, TTX and the road number run the side pretty well nice and leg legible all the little uh, labels down here on the side very fine detail on this set really impressed 
Okay, the tower section. You know, same car, just some uh, end caps on each end. You can see probably in there I got some uh, double stick tape keeping it down. I do have some uh, weight to them. That's that's for sure. So it uh, it does uh, feel a lot heavier than you normally would think. Well, you kind of expect it probably heavy, but. The the detail in the bottom of the train, you can kind of see that there's some loose lines right in it, right down in here. That uh, they're not really loose; they're they're fragile. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So uh, be careful with the the bottom of your uh, trains. Now you can see this one right here. I don't know if you can really see that, but the um, this end piece here is not fitting inside the, the circle where it's supposed to fit inside. So I had to glue it right down toward the bottom and uh, then across this cross beam I glued it right in there so with super glue. And then it's all double stick taped down. It's not as solid as if you glued it obviously but it does keep it in place. And as long as these things are mounted flat, especially back here, um, both sides will line up just right. Now the the generator and the blade hubs just molded, you know, blocks of material. Same thing that all these things are made out of. I'm not actually sure what it is, but it's a mystery material. But it's got some detail up on the top, a little uh, access hatch for the workers to get in. Um, the hubs would probably mount over here on this side. You got uh, some control panels and everything else on the back. Hubs uh, have connector places for three blades, which most of these windmills are three bladed windmills. And uh, all in all, it's uh, not too bad. Double stick tape them all down and you are set to go. Let's go uh, take a look at how to put this thing down. We have the trailer train wind turbine set and this is how it's packaged. It comes with uh, instructions and you just break these pieces off. These are for the end caps of the tower. I like to uh, sand them down a little bit, make sure that uh, that surface that's going to mount on the trailer is nice and flat, no bumps. Then you got a little ridge right on the end there that fits around the inside of that uh, tower. Use uh, modeling glue or super glue. Just put a little edge around there, and then you just lay it on top and uh, press it, hold it in place for a few seconds. Probably, you know, with super glue, 15 to 30 seconds is good. And then we're going to do the other side, but the key thing here is to make sure that it is flat on both ends so that when it sits there, it doesn't wobble back and forth. Just like that. I use the trailer itself to kind of give me a flat space because kind of needed it. You can use a table. Anything that's flat will work. I just glue the other end down, set it in place, and hold it. Just kind of make sure that uh, you don't do any uh, twisting motions. Uh, you want that to stay as straight as possible. You'll have problems if you don't. Now under the blade, we have a longer blade than the trailer, of course, and so we need a special mounting to put on there. And we're going to show you how to put that together right now. 
cut off that piece, that piece, and this piece. The round circle will go into the end. Use a sharp razor knife, something that's really thin because that slot right there to break it out is pretty thin. Got the tops and the bottoms. I have a couple tabs on there. And so eventually you get it worked out. It comes right out. After you get all of your three pieces out, you gotta glue them together. Now, what you're looking at here is my first attempt at doing it, so the second attempt was a little bit easier. I glued all three of them together using the, the bottom mount because it snaps over some tabs on the bottom. And I glued the end just on that end and the tabs together so that it would go over the top. Doing it this way that you have here, I ended up with uh, two pieces that got a little misaligned and I had to trim the tabs on to get that end piece on. So live and let learn, you know. So, on to the other piece here. We have um, four pieces in there. Two ends and two sides. Glue the, the, the ends onto the sides. They snap right into these little tab holes there. Uh, probably instead of on this way, glue the other end that I'm holding and put the other side on. And you'll kind of see that I have to do that anyway here later, shortly. So it's a little bit easier to do it that way. Um, press it in place. And as you can see, if you uh, put it together, there's uh, two sides and there's little tabs down to the bottom. And those are the, supposed to align with the bottom of your, uh, your back and your front. One little note here is I'm about to put on the front backwards. I didn't flip it over and so I mounted it backwards. It didn't affect how the blade fit inside the uh, the stand there, but it just wasn't the correct way of doing it. But it still worked overall. And as you can see, I got two oh, one, one side and two the front and the back put together in a U shape, and I just laid it down snapped in the tabs. Having a tweezers really did help a lot. Holding the part in place and uh, making sure I didn't you know, break it or anything like that. So once it's all snapped in, that's what it looks like. As you can see the bottom there, they're, you know, they're not on the same side. Now you just take it and you slide in your blade through the two at the top there and that's how it looks like. Now these will line up so they fit on one flatbed car. Now to glue the other piece on, I glued the side or the, the cross rail that's there and so I also glued toward the bottom there because this particular blade, the uh, the end there was not shaped the right size to fit inside snugly into that piece of plastic. This is very important that you keep it flat and with the other stand in place. Otherwise, it, if you don't want it to twist, just like the uh, tower section. So I check it sure it's uh, you know flat as it can be and it'll work out. That didn't quite get perfect but uh, it does work. 
Now, I didn't show here, but I just put a couple pieces of uh, double-sided tape on each end and stuck the blade down on top of that and it holds it in place. Well, there you go, Man Cavians. This has been my review of the Microtrains line wind turbine set. The windmills, they're beautiful. They work just fine uh, sitting on the flatbeds as long as you put the mounts together correctly and level. Other than, other than that, if you don't put them level, you, you don't need them on the flatbed because they're just going to fall off and you're going to derail all the time. So um, I give this set a 98 out of 100 uh, because one of the blades was not quite uh, round enough or actually large enough to actually fit in the space for the mount. You can still glue it in place, but uh, it just wasn't the perfect uh, position actually. But other than that, that's, that's the only really bad thing I have to say about it. Uh, make sure you have your clearances uh, to run this on your layout because if you don't have uh, some space around the curves for the overswing of the blades, they're going to bang into things, they're going to derail whatever you have along the track over there, or derail the train that you're pulling. Um, just make sure your clearances are uh, met. Um, if you have a tight clearance, make sure there's no trains on that other uh, rail or buildings that it's going to hit. Uh, but I would recommend an 18 inch radius or greater. Let me show you a run by of the set on my layout and uh, if you want to find out more about this and other videos that I have go ahead up and subscribe right up in this area I'll put a link and also put some links down below in the comment section for my uh, Twitter and my Facebook page and my Google Plus and of course my channel so till next time man caves this is Bob from the Bob Zenskill Man Cave signing out. And happy model railroading. And stay off the tracks. Especially if there's a train coming. That's a no-brainer.